How's it going, everybody? My name is Jake. I go by JRide Flips here on social media, and I am a full time eBay Poshmark Mercari reseller. If you guys have any questions about eBay, about thrifting, about reselling, about anything, you can go ahead and put them in the comment section to the side. Just wanted to uh, just thrifting. Sorry. Just wanted to welcome in everyone that's catching the replay. Um, yeah, let's talk about one of the best ways to build wealth on eBay and beyond eBay outside of eBay. This this principle applies to all industries, everything that you want to learn about and get good at. And that is finding someone who is better than you at something and asking them a ton of questions and just really copying what they're doing. Have the humility to understand that they are good at this for a reason. And they have already skipped a ton of what's called the learning curve. And you yourself can just skip that learning curve too if you just humbly listen to and even copy what they're doing. Um, a lot of times we feel like we have to figure things out on our own. We have to touch the stove to understand that it's hot. When simply all we have to do is just listen to someone who's smarter and more capable than us to understand that the stove is already hot and we don't have to touch it. You can skip through a ton of the struggles and failures of reselling if you just listen to people who you connect with and who you can have a similar business model to. A lot of you guys are able to uh, sell remote controls or sunglasses because you learned that through my channel and you didn't have to just come up with that on your own. You guys were able to learn that and copy that from me. I was able to learn and copy some schemes from Osborne to Thrift about um, digital cameras and things like that. And then this is what I do on TikTok and YouTube. I don't come up with my own titles. I just seek out knowledge for people that are smarter than me. So every morning I search before I'm about to create a TikTok. I just search on the platform TikTok hooks. Because the most important thing is stopping people from scrolling to watch your video. The best, most effective way to do that is to have an awesome hook. And so every single morning, I refresh myself on what's a very good hook. I listen to people that have way more followers than me, way more success than me, way more views than me. And I just humbly listen to them and apply what they're teaching. And then I do better. Every time that I get away from seeking out that knowledge every single day or every single time that I post, my videos do a little worse. Every single time I go and I seek that knowledge and I just make sure I and I copy someone else who's better at me than this, if I copy their hook, my videos do better. Same thing can go with investing. I learned the hard way investing when I was younger, made some uh, pretty poor decisions when it came to investing. It was good to learn through that experience, but I wish that I would have known this hack earlier that I could have just copied <laughs> I could have just copied, copied Warren Buffett and done a lot better. I could have just copied um, Bill Gates, done a lot better. Actually, a lot of my portfolio looks like Bill Gates' portfolio because he's an underrated investor. Anyway, if you want to learn anything in life, find someone who's better at it than you. If you want to be a basketball player and you personally know a D1 athlete that's willing to teach you some drills and do some stuff, go learn from them. If you want to be successful on YouTube, Copy what successful YouTubers are doing. And if you have a relationship with someone who's already doing well on YouTube, ask them questions and copy what they're doing. Same with eBay. If you like someone's business model here on YouTube, just do it. All you got to do is uh, all you got to do is just uh, make sure that that you're following what they're doing. Make your own different changes from your own experience and just make a ton of money. It's also important to have that as your foundation and then build upon it. The best thing you can do is copy someone else's formula and then do it better or add your own twist to it. And so that's what I'm constantly trying to do when it comes to content, when it comes to selling on eBay is just uh, following people who know more than me and then trying to make it my own unique twist that I think is better. When I think when that better is a failure, cross it out and go back to the drawing board, try to do something else that's better and just keep improving things over time. But you can skip a whole ton of pain and you can just skip that learning curve by just copying someone who's better than you. So hope that helps. I, I know it's just a simple thought, but uh, it really can really can help you in your eBay business. Just, just find someone who's, and I'm not saying me, I'm not saying other YouTubers, 
there's so much information out there of people that are better at this than we are and we can just go copy them and it's awesome so let's see if you guys have any questions i love these q a's <clears throat> i love just hanging out with you guys answering some questions if you guys have any questions about ebay about reselling about thrift stores about garage sales about promoted listings about what items to pick up things like that go ahead and ask them and i will get to as many of them as i can i have a question is there a way oh hold on let me go back oh i'm, I'm in the wrong i'm in the wrong spot sorry let me go over here so i can answer these questions for you guys into the studio sorry just having a tad bit of uh technical difficulties here um not sponsored if you guys use um, a mouse and you do a lot of editing or you do a lot of listing and your hand cramps i definitely recommend the logitech master 3 th the master 3s it's freaking dope it's changed my life all right let's see here i have a question is there a way to source inventory without using thrift shops garage sales thank you yeah go to my channel Type in J. Wright Phillips advanced sourcing methods. I talk about this very often on my channel and on these lives. Oh, but there's tons and tons and tons of ways. I'll give you just a few, and then I want you to go ahead and watch that video. Facebook um, group pages are really good. And there, there's so there's just so much you can do with that. So much you can do with that. You also want to establish connections with flea market vendors or storage unit buyers. Uh, you can buy storage units yourself, though I don't really recommend that. Uh, you can buy out lost and founds at um, snow, at uh, ski resorts, tons of different things. There's just a, so many ways that you can source outside of those two traditional ways. And uh, dude, you can even go door to door. I haven't done this. I don't know anyone that has done it. But you can literally just go door to door, knock on the door and say, hey, I'll be really quick with you. I don't want to bug you. My name is Jake. I have an eBay shop where I sell a ton of electronics that people don't really use anymore. I was just wondering if I could buy any of your digital cameras or remote controls or iPods that you may have just sitting in a junk drawer. Um, I'm willing to pay you some money if you're if you're looking for a couple extra bucks right now. Do you have any of those on hand? You could honestly do that. I might do it for a video. Who knows? Sounds like a good video. Um, let's see here. I'm reading your guys' comments and then I'm just looking for questions. Can you do a video about shipping large items? I have a couple sound systems and bows and bar and don't know the best way to ship. Yeah, if you watch my two longest videos, um, I go over shipping large items. It's super simple. Just uh, wrap it in bubble wrap until you can't see it. Put it in a box and ship it ground service. USPS ground advantage or UPS ground. Uh, would you recommend storage units as a way to source? Thanks. Yeah, I just I uh, mentioned that I don't. I don't. Um, it's not. It's very difficult for the average person. Uh, there's just so many logistics and so many emotions that can get in the way of you being successful. Buying storage units oftentimes leads you to listing a ton of things that don't sell. It also you waste a lot of time taking things to the dump or paying fees to have someone else take your things to the dump. Uh, there's just a lot of hiccups that come with buying storage units. But if you copy someone else who's better at it than you, then you can quickly learn how to make storage flipping profitable. Uh, you guys want to hear part of my 10-year plan? I think I'm going to own storage units. I think uh, it's the second lowest risk business in America. And uh, you need a ton of capital to start. Um, but... You can just go buy a cement slab and you can build your own storage units or you can buy out a facility uh, for five or seven million dollars. And then it's one of the biggest cash flow machines um, in the US. And then when things don't go well, I can just sell the items on eBay. So I think I think my future holds. I, I was thinking about being like, you know, a ton of real estate, but I think that I'm actually going to specialize and focus on storage units. Um, not buying and selling storage units, literally buying a storage unit facility and renting out the storage units to people. <clears throat> um, hey, appreciate that. No, I'll just power. Let's see. Do you guys have any questions? What's up, Jake? I just listed the Robert Glenn flip cuff shirt I got from you for $125. Will be fun to watch. Nice. Love to see it. Question. What program or app do you use to edit your YouTube short videos? I use CapCut. Um, I use CapCut for all of my editing, for my long form and my short form, for my Facebook videos, for my TikTok videos, for everything. So it's called CapCut. I think it was created by TikTok. Um, 
Man, I hear a ringing in here. It's kind of annoying. I hope you guys can't hear it. Uh, right there in the top corner, cap cut with that little... That's the app that I use. And that's what the application looks like right there. Already gave you a thumbs up on the video. Appreciate ya. Um, should have stopped by when you were in Flagstaff. I've been selling my whole store. Darn. Missed ya. Um, I sold some Serengeti sunglasses for $99. I never would have picked up without watching you. Yep, I bought like 20 pairs of Serengetis for $15 each like a year ago, and they all sold super fast, anywhere between $59 and $189. So that was dope. I wish I could find a ton of those again. Uh, do you use the cash or accrual method for accounting? Um, I'm not an accountant, so this is all entertainment purposes. Don't do what I say. But uh, yeah, I'm an S corporation. So every single cent that hits my bank account, I have to uh, account for it. And uh, that's as vague as I'm going to be, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Goodwill in Arizona is still doable if you catch a roll. Otherwise, it's slim pickings. Um, I went to three of them on this vacation and I absolutely slayed. So Arizona was really good. Um, Arizona, you could definitely be a full-time flipper in Arizona, in my opinion. How often do you source? I have 90 listed, 110 sold. Just started last month and can't buy enough good sell three items. That's what I'm talking about, Zach. Keep it up. You're in an amazing place. People are very envious of you that you have more sold than you have listed. Um, I'm hoping that we can make that more common than it is uncommon. That's one of my goals. Um, I feel like more people would resell and more people would stick to reselling um, because the old way is build the biggest store you can of common items that don't sell very well and just build your store, build your store, build your store. I'm hoping that we can uh, usher in a new chapter of eBay re reselling where people only focus on fast sell three items and they actually enjoy what they do and they don't have to have extreme overhead and burnout and all of this stuff that can that are the huge cons of having a huge, huge store. Um, having a small store of fast sell three items and not having enough product is a much better problem than having too big of a store where you have overhead that you can't keep up with you have burnout because you have to list 40, 50, 80, 100, 200 items per day. Um, I think that you have some awesome problems, Zach. Um, I source every single day. Every single day except for Sunday. I'm out there. Out there sourcing, having a good time, just picking up items and selling them on eBay. Um, once I move to northern Utah, I will probably source six hours a day. Um, I will... Yeah, I like to work about 10 hours a day. Um, it's just fun. I really enjoy working. Sometimes I'll work 12 hours a day. Um, I plan on sourcing for six hours and then making content for four hours and then having employees do all the other aspects of eBay for me. <clears throat> do you promote your listings on all of your items? Yes, I promote all of my listings at 2.6%. I'm new to Pirate Ship. Do you use Pirate Ship? Is it worth the hassle? Yes, I use Pirate Ship for... All of my businesses, um, small announcement, I'm going to be also um, doing some merch for J-Ride Flips. I'm super excited about it. Passion of mine. It's going to be really awesome. I'm hoping that I'm fostering a community, and I'm hoping that this can also strengthen the community. Um, so I'm going to start selling um, plushes of remotes, because I like to sell remotes. Um, it's called turn on your cells. So turn on your cells with a, with a plush remote, hoping that that, hoping that that's something that you guys might be interested in. And, uh, I can just import all of that data into pirate ship and still save 70% on shipping through that too. So and I also ship all of my stuff through Mercari on pirate ship and my ship all. And then I have a few other businesses where it requires me to ship things. And I always use pirate ship. So I use pirate ship for everything. Um, I found you haha. -ha, another live. What's up, Jake? Hey, Appreciate you being here. Can you talk more about VCR and DVD players? Are they worth it still? Okay, so I always have an issue. I, like, I'm just not the smartest guy in the world. When people say talk a little more about something, I don't know what you guys mean. Yes, they are super worth it to sell. Look up on eBay, DVD, VCR, combo player, and you'll be shocked by the sell-through rate. And then look up individual models. Um, again, I'm going to reiterate this until I'm blue in the face. Bats don't sell on eBay, but the right bats sell on eBay. DVD players don't sell on eBay, but the right DVD players sell on eBay. 
plush does not sell on eBay, but the right plush sells on eBay. So if you ask me, do VCR players sell on eBay? I would say no, but I would also say yes. If it's a Panasonic PV-V4036, yes, that sells on eBay. If it's a Hitachi with no remote, no, it doesn't sell on eBay. So <laughs> like, it has to be the right, like, like, does Dyson sell on eBay? No, I can, I can come up with several. Okay, so I have three Dyson vacuums right behind me right now. Okay, all of these are Dysons. Okay, this little part that I can take off, but I'm having an issue taking it off. <laughs> okay, um, this Dyson handle. It says Dyson on it, but it has a very slow sell through rate. So I'm going to take that part off and I'm going to throw it away. But the brush head on the bottom of it that says Dyson on it sells extremely well. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to listen. I'm going to sell it. But every single part on that vacuum doesn't sell very well. Like five or six of the parts do. There are Dyson vacuums that suck and not in the good vacuum suck way but in the uh slang this sucks way no not a dyson graveyard christian not a graveyard uh that bought those today they will be listed tomorrow no such thing as a death pile or a graveyard here but um there are tons of parts of that dyson that won't sell so if you ask me does dyson sell i will say no and then if you ask me does dyson sell for four or five parts i will say yes so you guys have to get in your heads that like, so this morning in the thrift store, I bought a Bose remote and the receiver was there and I left the receiver behind because the receiver had a 20% sell through rate, but the remote had a 300% sell through rate. Both said Bose, but I did not buy Bose today. And I did buy Bose today. Does that make sense? Like, I really hope that that makes sense. There's a ton of Husky tools that i don't buy and there are a ton of husky tools that i buy the reason why i buy them is because i ask ebay hey does this sell i ask ebay by by searching does does the um mx master 3s logitech sell let's see so you go to ebay you type in logitech mx 3s there are 530 available and there are 792 sold. So this has like 160% sell through rate. So eBay just told me, yes, this sells. And it sells for about $60 in used condition, $90 in new condition. So eBay has told me, yes, this product does sell. And we just sold Max Payne 2, the fall of Max Payne for Xbox. Just sold an Xbox game for 15 bucks. So yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm, and I answer this same question every single live and I'm happy to do it. And I'm happy to keep explaining it over and over and over again, because that is the point of this channel. Um, I, I get new subscribers every single day that have never sold anything on eBay or have only sold two to five items on eBay. The majority of the growth of this channel comes from two beginner's guides on eBay. And so the average person that subscribes to me um, is very, very new to reselling. And I hope that I can be a resource for you guys to actually stay with reselling and make more money than you ever have and spend more time with your family than you ever have. So in these lives, you guys probably know that we get similar questions every single time. And that is perfectly okay with me because I want all of these new people that come in to have these questions answered. But yeah, understand that there are tons of things within brands that just absolutely will not sell. And there are tons of things within brands that will sell the minute that you list them if you price them accordingly. I don't know the answer to any of that, but eBay does. eBay always does. What are some evergreen clothing items? I don't know. eBay knows the answer to that. Um, I don't think there is an evergreen clothing item. Gucci, maybe? Hats? But um, like this hat, I could not sell this hat for $6 shipped. But there are some hats that sell for $700 plus shipping the second that you list them. You just have to ask eBay what those what those uh, hats are. Still trying to work out flat rate shipping. Thank you for your video. 
What do you do for items 13 to 16 ounces? I do um, 587 plus shipping. I mean, 587 for those items. <clears throat> do you think sellers actually believe their own conspiracies about listings being hidden? Uh, mystery servers, etc., or just in denial for sourcing bad items? The lack of accountability seems deadly. Yeah, they truly believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, conspiracy theories are are very are very prevalent, and it's just a it's just a human nature and, and psych psychological fact is that it's just it's just never your fault when it's, and and if more people took the blame for more things in their life, I really do think that you would live a happier life. If you take blame for everything that happens to you and you control everything that you can control, then you're you're going to be really good at business. You're going to be a really good partner. You're going to be a really good dad or mom or sibling. Um, the more accountability that you can take for yourself in your own life, we're just getting real controversial here in the first 20 minutes. If you, Yeah. They truly do believe that it's 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 somebody else's fault. And it's, yeah, I don't know. If you want to make money, you have to go make it. And you can't blame anyone else but yourself. Things work and then they stop working. And that is entrepreneurship, is constantly seeking what is working and making things work. And if you blame eBay or you blame a thrift store or you blame competition, then you're not going to, you're never going to meet your potential. That, that is business is, is beating your competition. So when people complain about competition, I don't know if you complain about your competition, you probably shouldn't be a business owner. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but if you are constantly complaining that other people are making it so you can't succeed, then you won't, you, you won't. So I don't know. It's tough. It's tough out there. How often do you promote on eBay and please help me with patience. I'm, if something doesn't sell within a few weeks, my knee jerk reaction is to lower the price. Yeah. I, per, I promote everything on eBay at 2.6%. A fast sell through rate is a 100% 90 day sell through rate, which means a fast moving item on eBay takes about 90 days to sell. So you shouldn't have 12 listed and expect to sell 12 every day or even every week. You should expect to sell one item for every 100 items you have listed if you're looking for quality items. So if you have 1,000 listed, you should expect to have around 10 sales per day. Sometimes you might have 14, sometimes you might have six. That's just the way business goes. But if you have good quality items that have around an 80% sell through rate, you should expect to sell one item for every 100 you have listed. So if you have 50 items, you should not expect to sell 45 items in a week. You should expect to sell probably, probably 10 items a week. That would be a good goal to shoot for. How do you ship golf clubs? Just sold some, thanks for the videos. Go to a used golf club shop go to the dumpster and pick out 18 of those boxes and put them in your garage. And then every time you sell them, just put them in that box and ship them USPS ground. Um, if you don't want a dumpster dive, you can ask them, Hey, do you, um, will you give me a box or can I buy a box? And then there's also a way that you can, I'll make a video on another way, but the easiest way is to just go get a golf club box. Um, Golfing is one of the most popular hobbies in the United States. So I guarantee you there is a dumpster with those boxes within seven miles of your house or less. So go find one of those. <clears throat> Many thanks to you. You are truly awesome. Would you be willing to make a more in-depth video on how you package items, what to box and whatnot? So just, yeah, I have a ton of those videos, but um, again, a lot of new a lot of newbies come in, so I guess I just need to make another one because that's uh, kind of the question of this live. Um, but yeah, a lot of bubble wrap and boxes and, and ship them out. So like, uh, I don't know, like do when you newbies, let me know and then try to think back, you uh, experienced resellers, think back to when you first started. Did you think that like, shipping different things would be significantly different than shipping something else. So like, 
the way I ship the way I ship this and the way I ship this is the same. Bubble wrap this way a ton. Flip it like this, bubble wrap it a ton, put it in a box and ship it. Lay this on its side, bubble wrap it a ton, flip it, bubble wrap it a ton, put it in a box and ship it. Like that's shipping. Um, remote control, okay. Eyeglasses, wrap it in a ton of bubble wrap, wrap it in some bubble wrap, put it in a box and ship it, or put it in a poly bag and ship it. Yeah, CD. This is a Rob Zombie CD that I found in Arizona for a dollar. Should sell pretty quickly for like 18 bucks. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap, put in a box or put it in a poly mail and ship it. I don't, I don't, I don't, really know what else to say besides that but i can do a video of me doing that you're the manager right thanks for all the tips i've made tons of money from watching hey i appreciate that that's what i'm talking about also how do you make money on dvds and cds does it have to be free shipping i can't see myself making money on them um uh, so again cds and dvds don't sell on ebay but the right cd and dvd sells on ebay you don't have to do free shipping on anything if it has a fast sell-through rate. <clears throat> so what people make the mistake of, again, we're going back here, they think, oh, I'm going to sell DVDs on eBay. And they just pick up a ton of crappy CDs, list all of them, and then sell one every other day, even though they have 800 listed. But if they just took the time to actually look up the CDs that are valuable, then they would only have 50 listed, but they would sell two a day because they're only listing in demand items. So again, DVDs and CDs don't sell on eBay, but Rob Zombie, this Rob Zombie CD sells on eBay. Not even all Rob Zombie CDs sell on eBay because some Rob's, Rob Zombie CDs, they made 80 million of them so there's a ton of them floating around out there but then he may have done a live recording in new york where they only made 10,000 cds there's only 10,000 floating around if you can get your hands on one of those they're going to sell extremely extremely fast and uh yeah i hope i don't sound like irritated or grumpy because <laughs> because that's not how i want to come across but DVDs don't sell on eBay until they do. Golf clubs don't sell on eBay until they do. So like 98% of everything doesn't sell on eBay, but 2% of it does. And it's our job as resellers to find that 2% and sell it on eBay. So again, I go to the thrift store every day and there are i don't know 300 pairs of eyeglasses and sunglasses and i pull out one sometimes two so that's not even that's point that's like 0 0.01 percent that's my job to look at 300 items and only take one or to go on a rack of clothing that has 800 shirts 800 and take two, maybe three. To go to to go to a wall of electronics and look at 25 units and take one. That's our job. So do DVD players sell on eBay? No. But the right DVD player sells on eBay. I hope that's making sense. Um, let's see. I'm a new eBay seller. I started out with awesome, great sell through rate. However, after one two-star rating, now my sales are down, even though I promote everything for free shipping. What can I do different? Um, it sounds like, are you sure you're talking eBay? That sounds like Mercari. eBay just has positive, neutral, or negative. Mercari has one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. Either way, I talked about this on my podcast this morning, the Reseller Island podcast. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, um, if anybody... 
could put that in the in the comments right now, the, the Reseller Island podcast, that link. Um, I made this analogy where Aaron Rodgers has completed like 18,000 passes. And if he has two bad passes in a game, that's okay. But when he played on the Packers, if he got injured and Jordan Love stepped on the field and he made nine throws and had two bad passes, two out of nine passes were bad. That's a lot to take in. And we judge that much more harshly than we do two bad passes from Aaron Rodgers because we've seen him make 18,000 amazing passes. Same thing with eBay. If you're early and you make some mistakes, you're going to be... um, you're going to be um, penalized more severely and take that with a grain of salt than you are if you've sold 1,800 items and you only have two. Um, so you just got to keep selling more items. And don't don't talk yourself out of it and don't overthink it. Just keep selling items. They're not, you messed up, you got one bad review. That's okay. They're not going to say, oh, this person sucks. We're not going to give them any more traffic. You're still going to get traffic and you've probably just convinced yourself You've, you've made the situation bigger than it actually is. You're going to have days where you sell five and then zero and then three and then one and then two and then like six and then like back to one. On the days where you get one or zero, a lot of times it has nothing to do with negative feedback or anything like that. You just had a day like I do. I very consistently have $800 days. And sometimes an $800 day is followed by a $250 day. Didn't do anything wrong. I just, I sold 17 items yesterday. Today, for whatever reason, I only sold six. It's not because I have negative feedback. It's not because I didn't do anything wrong. It just happens. That's that's part of being a business owner. So I wouldn't put too much stock into it. I would just take a deep breath, relax, keep listing quality items on eBay or Mercari or wherever you're selling, and uh, just keep building. I've heard owning storage units is a big hassle of paperwork when a buyer doesn't pay, but it would be a good business venture with an eBay store. Even without an eBay store, it is the the second least risky business in the United States, aside from aside from selling insurance. Um, selling insurance makes more millionaires than any other industry. But uh, yeah, storage units very, 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 very low risk. Um, real estate. You have issues with people not paying their rent and stuff like that. It's just part of business. Same thing with storage units. Sometimes people don't pay their rent and you just, you give them enough chances and then you just repo their stuff if they don't pay. <clears throat> How does CapCut compare to iMovie? CapCut is so much better than iMovie, Bama. Bama Jaybird, it's time to get CapCut, man. And CapCut is free. And then you can pay $7 a month for a few advanced features that you'll probably never use. Uh, so yeah, just use the free version of CapCut. It's uh, so, so, so much better than iMovie. Um, let's see here. What's the best way to learn about test electronics? We certainly bought an amplifier and dual cassette player, but can't figure out what to hook up to the speakers. Uh, type in the model number test. So like right here, I have a... Um, Pioneer 101 disc player. Just type into Google, just type into YouTube. Pioneer PD-F905 review or test. And they're going to show you how to plug it in and how to test it. That's the best one. And do that. Just rinse and repeat with every single electronic that you purchase to resell on eBay. Jay Wright, in the last week, I've had three people hand items to me because they noticed I'm a reseller. Most notably was a lady in her 60s gave me an Icon camera with three lenses. Cost $38 worth $400. Yep. Yep. Tell people what you do. Don't be afraid to be a reseller. And, uh, yeah, this happens to me all the time, too. All the ladies in my in my thrift store come up to me with remotes and cameras and stuff, too. It's awesome. Um, Let's see here. Trying to find some questions. I use Shippo for my sword selling business, pirate ship for other stuff. Nice. Let's see. Um, why do you use pirate ship with Mercari as opposed to their shipping shipping things? Because they charge way too much. So if I used their shipping for this. <laughs> 
if I tried to ship this with uh, Mercari, um, if it's going to New York, it would they would probably charge like eighty seven dollars, <laughs> and that item will never sell. But if I just ship my own, then I can just do a flat rate of like fifty five dollars or thirty dollars, and then ship it through Pirate Ship for twenty six bucks. I just wanted to say I really appreciate your attitude and drive. It's very inspiring. Keep doing what you do. You're a great influence for reselling. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> I feel like I'm a little grumpy today, so I I, uh, I apologize for my not so great mood because I love helping you guys. I love answering questions, but I feel like I'm being a bit <clears throat> a bit sassy today, and I, I hope I'm I hope it's not coming across that way. Do you look up vacuum parts by model number or key term? Model number. So that. This one, if you're in a store, I'm getting all tangled up. Oh, sorry, guys. Awesome angles. If you're in a store and you find this vacuum, type in Dyson DC 40 parts and then just scroll and you're going to find the brush and you're going to find this little part right here that comes off. And then you're also going to find the canister. You're also going to find this um, handle. You're going to find the wand. You're going to find the cord. You're gonna find these buttons. Just take off the ones that are worth your time and sell them. Um, if you find one of the wands here, I'm going on a field trip, boys and girls. Oh, hi, Scout. If you find this at the thrift store, not sure if you guys can see that. Uh, Dyson V7 Motorhead Original Parts. Search that. You're going to find the brush head, you're going to find the wand, you're going to find the canister, you're going to find the battery. Take off all the parts and sell them. I recommend only finding the ones with fast sell-through rate and listing those. Um, but you got to do what's best for you and your business. All right. What do we got cooking here? Oh, hi, Scout. Welcome in. Um, let's see. How many questions here? Man, I hear some ringing for sure. When you look at the 90 day history of a product, what qualifies it as a product that will sell? Um, sold history. So if you look something up and 18,000 have sold in 90 days, then a crap ton is selling every single day. So it's a good chance that that, that your item will also sell. If you look up something and there's only 18 listed and 114 sold, the data is clearly there that that is selling every single day and is going to continue to most likely sell um, because it is a hot item. So that's what you're looking for. It's called sell through rate. Talk about it on this channel a lot. If you, um, Kevin the Commonwealth Picker talked about this on his video this morning. A lot of people just have their phone stuck on sold. So they'll look something up and it'll be like, oh, three things have sold for an average of $40. I'm going to buy this to resell, but it's important to toggle back and forth between sold and listed because a lot of times three things will be, especially with like CDs, uh, with everything, you'll see that three have sold, but then you put four, but then you go back to just listings and there's like 200. It's like, oh, it's an awful sell through rate. Don't buy it. Do not buy that to resell it because yours is just going to sit there and sit there and sit there. But if something has 40 listed, and 27 sold that's not a perfect sell through but it's a pretty good one um and you can you can work with that you can uh judging by your business model that's a that's a pickup for some not a pickup for for everyone but you can just use that 90 day sold history to to calculate that i have nine items on there and i'm constantly watching them i'm used to marketplace i want to become a pro seller on ebay yep my dad is right there with you right now <laughs> he's constantly being like Oh my gosh, this has like 63 views. Uh, it has four watchers. Uh, buy it, buy it, you know? Because my dad's very new to eBay. He currently has like 200. He, he has 200 listed and he's sold like like 75 items. Um, he's very aggressive. He lists, he'll list, he lists like 70 in a day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's doing really well. It's focusing on fast sell through items. And he's always just like, oh man, like I haven't sold any in, in like, I sold like three in two hours and I haven't sold any in like nine hours. Like, Relax, relax, you're okay. Um, whenever you're starting something, you're always, you're always, uh, you're always super pumped and excited about it. And then eventually it'll get to a point 
I, I don't I don't even notice views whatsoever. Like uh, there might be a couple items that I have that have like hundreds of views or 80 views. I, I don't even notice ever. Um, let's see here. Do you inflate your shipping costs? Um, my, um, I always make money on, on shipping. So if it costs me $4 to ship something, I, I usually charge people $5. If it costs me $5 to ship something, then I charge six. And then I usually wait two hikes until I inflate my, my shipping rate. <clears throat> that's, that's my strategy. Finally caught a live stream. I've been watching you for a few months and love your content. Plan on getting my store up in a month or so. So I'm talking about Anthony. Do you offer free shipping and free returns? Yes on free returns, no on free shipping. I'm maintaining a 90 day sales of 16K garage sale season starting next month. Excited to take what I learned last year and go hard this year. That's what I'm talking about, Scott. It's gonna be an awesome year. Um, I've noticed items appear as sold on the main search and filter sold for 90 days, but a different list appears in Terapeak for 90 days using the same keywords. I wouldn't focus on that. If you want, if you want to, that's your prerogative. Uh, but that's for me just a, a good excuse to waste a ton of time doing research when the 90 day sell through rate gives you enough information to make calculated decisions. A lot of people, Terapeak is a blessing and a curse. Like Terapeak is accountable for getting people a few extra sales, but it's also accountable for making people waste hours and hours and hours and hours of time. <laughs> Have you found any success running a sale in your store? Absolutely. I am now giving thank you cards with a cheap gift. I include one to go stay and wipe with my thank you card and have a great five star return. Have you seen any difference when offering specific discounts? That is my next go to pushing for return customers. Yes, your business. Um, do you think that Target does really well when they put 20% off? Uh, do you think that Home Depot increases their sales when they have a 40% off? You are Costco, you are Target, you are Home Depot. If you do sales, you will get more sales for sure. I've been selling since 2004, that's what I'm talking about. I find myself fairly knowledgeable on the subject, but I watch your videos because it's fun. I used to sell on Amazon full-time from 08 to 14, but I divorced them after they started restricting items, yeah. In 2015, I took time away from selling to reinvent myself, but I've always been one foot in, one foot out the door, hustle and motivation, good stuff, Jay Ryder. Yeah, just just Tim, cool man. Yeah, ever since two thousand four, that's awesome. You've seen a ton of ton of different changes. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's good stuff. But yeah, yeah, um, I did a bit on Amazon too. Amazon's just a whole nother whole nother world out there as well. But yeah, good stuff. Um, you're so right about business. We own a full time business, and this is our second. We're just starting. Thanks for all. Hey, appreciate you, Lisa. Um, dang, I'm getting stressed. I don't have one to four sales a day with 180 items listed at 8% average promoting list. Yeah, so you should be selling about one item per day at 180. That's uh, that's a good place to be. One or, two, one or two items a day is what you should expect. Um, and then if you increase your sell through rate, um, then you'll get one to four sales per day. So if you're picking up iPhones, then you'll have one to four sales per day. But if you're going to thrift stores, um the the uh it's it's harder to find items that have a fast sell through rate and that's what i preach on this channel is only come home with the fast sell through rate stuff so you have to leave stuff behind if it's not fast sell through rate so selling one or two a day at 180 is about where you should be um but yeah i have 1500 items in my store and i sell 15 every day sometimes it's 13 sometimes it's 18 Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's 22. Um, but on eBay, I have, for every 100 items I have, I sell one. Um, let's see. I love the content hustle, J-Ride. So I picked up Sherpa-lined plaid jacket in my local thrift store last week, and Google Lens only popped up results saying that it was a Stuzzy. Oh, that's good. And eBay came up with nothing. I picked it up for $8.95, and I'm having some issues finding info on it. What additional resources do you find when comps... Okay, you ready for this answer that a lot of people don't like? If I can't find information on it like that, I leave it behind. <laughs> I only focus on items 
that have a sell through that have a fast sell through rate and have a ton of data backing it. If it doesn't have the data backing it, I just leave it behind. Um, I don't spend hours on Terapeak. I don't go to work point. I don't ask other people like, what do you think? I just ask eBay. And if eBay doesn't see, I just, we just lost 20. That was a record. We just lost 20 people after, after that sentence. If eBay doesn't tell me it's a good buy, then I don't buy it. Um, so in that instance, I would just leave that behind. I wouldn't buy it. Not enough, not enough data for me, not enough proven data that it will sell. And I'm not saying that that's what you guys should do. That's just my business model. But I know that I can make more money finding items that have a history of selling than doing research on an, on an item that may or may not sell. And I may put 45 minutes into it when I could have just driven to two more thrift stores and found 18 other things that will sell for a couple hundred dollars. Do you include the cost of your shipping materials and your shipping costs? Bubble wrap is expensive. Yes, I do. For shipping to be cost effective, I recommend getting rolls of masking paper way better than bubble all the time. Um, this gets donated every single day. So I just pick up a ton of this for free. <laughs> Do you guys know the book, The Millionaire Next Door? Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I've never bought a single box and I have a sword business where I send very long packages. Thanks for the tip. I'm going to raid the golf club shop for sword. Bo yep. There you go, Gary. You're going to be able to sell a ton of swords and just ship them in golf, golf boxes. I think shipping was trickier before ground advantage. Yeah, ground advantage, you can just use ground advantage for everything and you're, you can run a solid business. DVDs, CDs, VHS sell like crazy for me on Amazon. Yep. But if uh, you pick up the wrong DVD and CD, then it's not going to sell well at all. Only what people are actually buying. Great podcast. Excited to see what comes with that in the future. We are too. Yeah, we're really excited about the podcast. It's super fun. Uh, and I also really appreciate you sharing the link on, on the Facebook chat. Appreciate you, Dylan. Do you think that the DVD player will make a comeback for Resign in the future? I don't really speculate on things like that. Maybe. I don't know. Um, if eBay starts telling me that it's selling, then I'll pick them up. But until then, I don't pick them up. Do you still recommend free returns on eBay? I used the advice and saved at least half of a full loss on a vintage model train that was sold for the first time to a first time buyer. Yes, I still recommend uh, free returns. Yes, especially when more and more people realize digital is not certain, physical media will never beat it. No, yeah, I, I make jokes about about CDs and cassettes and stuff, but uh, I sell a ton of it. It's just really, it's just really easy to get people um, to comment on short form if I say that uh, CDs don't sell on eBay. Uh, so that's fun. But yeah, no, there will always be there will always be demand for physical media. I don't see that you have any printers listed. Is there a greater risk in damage during shipping? I haven't heard you talk about printers. Yeah, I used to sell a lot more printers. I actually picked one up this morning. Um, but yeah. Printers have a much higher failure rate and a much higher return rate. So I tend to stay away from them unless they sell for three or four hundred dollars. Those are the only printers that I'm interested in. Or Samsung has a nice series. I forgot what it's called, but they're just like this big. Um, and those I've never had a failure rate on them yet. So that's awesome. Knock on wood. Uh, so I always pick those ones up too. They sell for about 90 bucks plus shipping. Do you recommend sending offers? Absolutely. Yep, I wake up and send offers every single time I get. Every single chance I get, I, I'm sending offers. Morning, Jake. Would you have the links to your Facebook market sourcing items ads? Thanks, mate. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have links or sourcing item ads. I don't know what that means. If you want to ask it again. How do you pack coffee makers with glass carafe, carafes? I wrap the carafe in bubble wrap and then I put it in the coffee maker and I wrap the coffee maker in the top of bubble wrap and then I put it in a box and I ship it. I swear, man, we need a reseller beginner's kit with cleaner batteries, universal chargers, magic sponges, etc. Yeah, I've actually thought about that. Um, just like selling like a reseller kit that has all that stuff plus a few more things, maybe even like a printer and things. The, Things like that. It's an idea. 
What's the best way for shipping things on eBay? Uh, use the eBay discounts. Don't take them to the USPS store and use retail rates. Use the shipping discount. I've been listing super inconsistently, but have high sell through rate items selling fast. There it is, okay? There's a group of, of people here on YouTube that don't believe you, <laughs> but I say this all the time. Best case scenario, list the same amount of items every single day. But it is better to list fast sell through rate items inconsistently than it is to list poor sell through rate items consistently. It's better to list 20 fast sell through rate items every single day, but that's hard. It's hard to find 20 fast sell through rate items every single day. I've been able to do that for a long time now, but it's not easy. It is much better to list three today, seven tomorrow, zero on Wednesday, 14 on Thursday of fast sell through rate items than it is to just do 15 mediocre to bad items every single day. First time seeing you live. Thanks for all you do. Hey, appreciate you. How do you ship golf clubs? Go to a golf store and get the boxes out of the dumpster and ship them USPS ground or I mean UPS ground. I made friends with people in my local thrift store. I bring them donuts once a month and now they look out for me. That's what I'm talking about. It's uh, best to make connections with people and it's best to um, actually enjoy your time doing what you do. And, uh, it's not good that man should be alone. Um, we are social creatures. We should we should develop relationships and make connections with people. And uh, yeah, that's a very good thing that you did there, pork rhino. <laughs> Hi, Jake. I had to ship the cord for a replacement coffee unit. We'll list water dispenser, drip tray, and cup things. Anything else to part out on this? It always just depends on each coffee maker and depends on how in demand the coffee maker is. So just look up the model number. And then if the drip tray is selling, then sell the drip tray. But don't just list the drip tray because you have it. If it has sales history, then sell it. If no one's buying it, don't list it. I'm just key. This is a, this is a great YouTube channel if you guys haven't discovered him yet. He uh, focuses a lot on video games particularly and electronics in general. But uh, yeah, good channel says, oh man, I didn't think about using pirate ship with Mercari. I tried to use Mercari, but when they said shipping was like 80 bucks, I changed my mind. Yeah, you just put ship your own and then just increase the price of your item. And then, uh, and then yeah, ship it with pirate ship. How do you take your pictures for items you list? I just use my iPhone. Um, I just uh, look something up on eBay. I, I hit sell similar and I take photos with my phone. If you only sold clothing, would you use Mercari's internal shipping or would you still use Pirate Ship? I'm almost always under two pounds. I if I only sold clothing and only used Mercari, then yeah, I'd use I'd use that. I, I do so anything that I can use flat rate on for Mercari, I do use Mercari. But anything over three pounds, I use ship your own. Thanks for the answer. Oh, okay, sweet. How do you track your inventory and sales? All that information is in eBay. Um, so yeah, your, your seller dashboard, it has it has all of your sales, all of your fees, all of your shipping, all of that stuff. The only thing that you need to keep track of is your cost of goods. And uh, you just have receipts and credit card for that. How often did you post when you first started on TikTok and YouTube? Uh, when I first started YouTube, I was doing four or five videos a week. And I do two TikToks every single day. I'm still doing two TikToks every day. Um, I'm still doing... So I have two YouTube accounts and a podcast. So you guys will see my face every single day, except for Sunday. Um, Monday morning, I drop a uh, the podcast, The Reseller Island. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, go check out The Reseller Island here on YouTube. On Tuesday, I usually do a What's Sold video, Kevin, well Kevin the Commonwealth Picker Flipper style. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, I drop a thrift store video. On Thursday, I usually do a live that I'm doing right now, but I had more time today, so I did it today. On Friday, I do a random talking head um, eBay reselling topic video. On Saturday, I do a yard sale video. And then on Sunday, I don't do any videos. That's my content schedule for YouTube. So it's a video almost every single day across my 
two account, my two channels and my podcast. Happy birthday. And then on TikTok, it's two videos a day, every single day. And uh, this month I got, this last month I got a hernia surgery. I was down a lot. And then I've been on three vacations in the last 25 days. And I have everything so optimized in my business. You probably didn't even realize that I've been taking a lot of vacations. Uh, just went to Sedona. I think I told you guys that one. But uh, yeah, um, I just have everything optimized to where things are going out. But now I'm going to have even more time to do even more content. So I haven't stuck completely to that content schedule for YouTube. Um, but that will be my... my uh, my schedule moving forward. And uh, because of all the vacations and stuff, I'm still catching up on a few things. Uh, but I should be completely caught up by the end of Wednesday, which I'm excited for. Thoughts on selling items you have pre-ordered from a vendor? I would wait until you actually have them in your possession um, because you can turn it, you can uh, get a ton of issues on eBay. Now, if you're selling them from your own website or on Shopify, pre-orders are awesome. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing pre-orders on eBay whatsoever. Like there's just so many things that can go wrong and so many complications. But if you have your own website or Shopify, pre-orders are a hack. I think, man, I'm just so passionate about so many things that sometimes I feel limited on this channel. I'm not complaining, but I just understand uh, the parameters that I need to stick with. But yeah, I'd love to talk about pre-orders on Shopify and, and drop shipping and things like that as well. But uh, it, those videos would, do horrible on this channel but yeah pre-orders um is a hack so i'm going to be launching t-shirts and and uh that, that remote control plush eventually and i'm going to launch it with a pre-order um but you can't do that on ebay don't do it on ebay uh, this is a polaroid and it sold in three minutes blew my mind thanks for your advice yeah it's awesome why do you not offer free shipping a ton of reasons type in j ride flips free shipping um i go over like four different reasons why in that video becoming an everything seller was by far the best thing I've decided, right around 12 to 15 sales a day on eBay only. Really appreciate the info. Started the 2% promoted has been amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of people that disagree with you. And there's a lot of people that do agree with you. You have to find what's best for your business. I think for beginners and for the average seller, everything selling is superior to niche selling. And then I think that you come into some crossroads around $300,000. Um, it's much harder to continue being an everything seller. But uh, yeah, most people don't make it to three hundred thousand dollars. So I think everyone should be a reseller, be an everything everything seller. I'm back to eBay after many years. I have one thousand items a month to list for free. Um, is it best to wait to look into a store until I am having a few hundred sales? Yeah, no, just uh, get a store. So eBay charges you after the listings. Once they once they start charging you, that's when you should upgrade to the store. And then once you have once you start getting charged for additional listings again, then upgrade your store and just keep doing that. And you can just Google when to get a store based on how many items you have. When do you think it's okay to start an eBay store? Immediately. Um, so let's see. Right here in front of me. I could start an eBay store because without even leaving... So I'm not going to use things that I'm selling on eBay. That would be cheating. But here's a personal thing that I use every day. Here's a Yeti cup. Okay, Yeti that holds water. I'm going to go start an eBay account right now, and I'm going to take a few pictures of this and list this. I just started my eBay store. Once that sells, I can use that money to go to a thrift store. That'll probably sell for like $18 plus shipping. I will profit around $11. Now I have $11 that I can go to a thrift store, buy three things at $3 each and one thing at $2 and sell those things each for about 18 to $25 and you're rolling. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, but I think you're talking about like an actual store instead of just listings. And I, I just answered that question in the last question. Um, let's see. What is the tax and fee rate different on each state and different on each category? Fees for clothing is around 13%. Fees for digital cameras is only 9%. A lot of my YouTube studies, including your videos, I started watching Cha-Ching King, and that guy gave some great info on vintage PC keyboards and vintage Pyrex big money with us. Yeah, Scott's a good guy. I really, I really like that channel as well. 
Clothing question. Do you use the specific drop down filters when researching comps for shirts for good stealth rate items? Uh, no, I just. For example, this Robert Graham shirt. I would type in Robert Graham purple flip cuff. That's all you need to get like a good sell through rate. Um, and then you can add embroidered if you want to market, if you want to uh, get an even more accurate sell through rate. And then you can type in 2XL, which is this size, if you want to get an even more accurate sell through rate. <laughs> Should I sell that on eBay or whatnot? If I do a clothing whatnot, will you guys come to it? Let me know. I learned so much from you that I tell everyone you are my mentor. That's what I'm talking about. By the way, 30 days, I made $4,400 on 50 items. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Keep it up. How do I sell this left Apple EarPod? How do I know if it works? I don't know much about Apple technology. It's going to be difficult if you don't know things. So you got to go to YouTube. And uh, you just got to figure out how to test it. The best way to test it is you're going to have to get one of these bad boys and charge it. Can't do that. Then you have to sell it untested. The way you um, sell it as an individual piece is right here. It'll say Apple A2083. You're going to see an Apple AirPod Pro second generation right only. Click on that. Hit sell one like this. Pick your price. Sell it on eBay. I didn't even think about using unwanted newspaper for cushioning. Yep. But it does not replace bubble wrap. Use a ton of bubble wrap and then use extra um, paper to fill in the voids. Do you still experience summer slowdown as an everything seller? No, um, because I only focus on things that sell. So like I'm just filling my shop with things that sell quickly. So I'm just picking things up that are selling within the next 90 days. And I just keep listing those items over and over and over and over and over again. And all of my inventory turns over every 90 days. Um, there's people that that guy that said he had 110 listed and 90 sold all of his items sell every single 90 days. I'm in that same boat. I had 3000 items and I'm down to 1500 because every I, I'm, I turn over my inventory about every 74 days now because I sell a, like 15 items on eBay. I list 15 items every day and I sell 15 every single day on eBay. And then I also sell four on Mercari. I sell about 10 every week on Poshmark. And then I just have my first Bonanza sale. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so I don't experience a summer slowdown because I'm only buying things that are going to sell in the next 90 days. And if they don't sell, if, they're, if they don't have the statistical data telling me that there's a high probability that they're going to sell in 90 days or less, I just don't buy them. And my cutoff isn't that strong. My cutoff is an 80% sell through rate, which is about 107 day sell through. Um, but because I have those other platforms, it actually ends up being a 74 day sell through rate. Um, man, you should run a little series where you have $30 to flip on Facebook Marketplace versus Goodwill versus Yard Sales and see what flip makes more inside of four weeks. That'll be fun, awesome video, and everyone to see a difference in pros and cons of each. Noted. I will do it. I will do it. What is the cheapest way to ship stuff? through an e-commerce platform, whether that's eBay, Shopify, Etsy, or Pirate Ship, these companies negotiate a deal with USPS and UPS and FedEx because they bring so much business to them. It's just kind of like buying in bulk. Hey, how much is this camera? $20. Sweet. How much are all 80 of your cameras? Can I get them for $8 each? Yeah, sure. Sweet eBay goes to USPS and they say, hey, we're going to we're going to send millions of packages every single day. Give us a discount or we'll do something else. OK, yeah, we want millions of packages a day. Here's a 70 percent. Here's a 30 to 70 percent discount. Make sure that you're using these discounts that these companies have. Do not go to USPS and get charged retail. Make sure you're using these rates from these companies. Next thing you want to do is you're going to want to type in eBay shipping. 
I have a few videos on eBay shipping on how to get even better rates and save money. Data Refinement has some, Commonwealth Picker has some, Osborne and Thrift has some. A ton of these YouTubers have ways that you can save even a few more dollars on things. Just watch those videos and you'll do fine. I've sold on eBay before a few times and always tended to get large to get large fees. I flipped a 12 string guitar and it takes like 15% just in fees, I believe. Yeah, so eBay gives you the ability to sell your item on a global market and you pay for that. Uh, if you tried to sell that same guitar at a yard sale, you're probably gonna get 25 bucks for it. Because you sold it on eBay, you were able to get a few hundred dollars for it and then you just give them 15% because they gave you that sale. Uh, so that's that's how that's how the eBay system works. Reseller kit is a great idea. Yeah, it would be. Do you have a guide on like tips and tricks for finding items, listing, selling, shipping? Yeah, that's my whole YouTube. Uh, so just go to YouTube and type in J Wright Flips, and I have a few thousand hours worth of those five questions you just asked. Why is it necessary to list every day? It isn't. I uh, I actually just said like twenty minutes ago. It's better to list zero seven one six zero thirteen than it is to just list 20 every single day if the items suck. So just find items that sell well and you don't have to list every single day. The more you list, the more work you do, the more money you make. So you want to find items that actually sell. And if you're listing more items that actually sell, you're gonna make more sales. So that's why it's necessary to list every single day if you want more sales, because if you, if I had, 8,000 of these at my disposal, why not list 40 a day every single day until they're gone, okay? I don't have 8,000 8, of these at my disposal, so I don't have that ability to. But if you have a ton of fast sell through rate items, list them every single day until they're gone. That's, that's, what, that's what I recommend. I asked you a while back about getting stressed out about returns. You mentioned that you calculate ahead of time, you expect 5% to come back. That mental trick has helped me out greatly. Thanks, yep. It is stressful and it does suck, but yeah, that's the best way to handle it. Just understand it's part of business. I also, I do this with all of my, with all of my, um, everything that I do in business. So my TikToks, for example, I average 70,000 views per TikTok. Sometimes I have a video that hits 500,000 or a million. Sometimes I have a video that only gets 4,500 views. When I get those 4,500 view videos, it sucks, but I understand that about 10% of my videos will get less than 10,000 views. It's just, it's just the data so far on my TikTok history. I'm hoping that I get better and better as I, as I do this more and more, but right now the data is showing me 10% of the time I'm gonna get less than 10,000 views and I just have to be okay with that when it happens. I learned, oh, I already read this. Thank you so much. Do you have a way to test wireless subwoofers? Um, no. Uh, you can download the apps that they connect it to. But uh, the best way to test something is type in the model number into YouTube. That is the best way. Um, every single time I pick up an electronic that I don't know how to test it, I YouTube how to test it. Do you have any tips on how to grow on whatnot and keep people in my shows? Um, yeah, the best way is to make connections, okay? A lot of people think this is an exclusive thing for YouTubers, but it's not. Um, raid trains are the best, the absolute best way to grow and whatnot. And I've never been a part of a raid train, <laughs> but I've seen, because I don't put a lot of time into whatnot whatsoever. I may put more time into it this summer. I might not, who knows. But the best way is if you are a small jewelry seller on whatnot, go into other small jewelry shows on whatnot and follow them and be active in the chat and say, wow, that's very pretty. That's an awesome piece. Wow, this is awesome. Hey, thank you so much for, for uh, auctioning off these items. This has been a fun show. This is great. And then talk with them and be like, hey, listen, you and I both share a, this, a similar audience, but it's segmented. So I would love to do a raid train with you and a few other jewelry sellers. All of us are small, but if we... If we just uh, coordinate with each other, you know, we may only have 13 people on our shows, but if we just raid each other over and over again, then eventually we're going to build up an audience. That's one of the fastest and best ways to grow on whatnot. And another way is to sell better items and be okay with taking significantly less money than they're worth. And if you're not willing to do that, 
I wouldn't recommend selling on whatnot because in order to grow, you have to go through that pain. Um, and a lot of people aren't aren't equipped for that. But yeah, whatnot can be awesome, but it's it's a lot tougher. To use a template for each item, I think creating an accurate listing is most is the most time consuming part. No. This is how I list. A lot of people disagree with me, but you don't have to you don't have to do what I do. Um, and I'm perfectly fine with the amount of money that I make. So if I found this, if I found this case, I see that the model number is A2190. So I'm going to type into eBay A2190. I'm going to see that 100, that 1200 of these Apple cases are listed. I'm going to filter to sold. And I'm going to see that 905 have sold. Sweet, this is an 80% sell rate item. I'm going to I'm going to sell it. I'm going to look at some of them that have sold, and I'm going to I'm even going to filter to used condition. Okay, then I'm going to find one that has the best title that looks just like mine. Apple AirPods Pro charging case only, first generation A2190 genuine. Sweet, that looks great. It sold for a reason. I'm going to copy that list, and I'm just going to do sell one like this. Gonna wait for that to populate. I'm gonna take photos. Watch. I'm not. I'm not gonna launch this, but look how fast this is. Okay. There's a photo. There's another photo. There's one. There's one. Done. Done. I'm gonna scroll down to item specifics. I'm gonna make sure that it's used. I'm gonna scroll down here to price. And I'm going to make sure that it's the price that I want it at. I'm going, I usually list these at $39.87. Done. For my description, I'm going to put a period because it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to make sure that it is on my up to eight ounce policy. And then I'm going to launch my listing. But I'm not going to because these are my personal AirPods. So I'm just going to close out of that. And I'm going to go to my drafts and I'm going to delete it. I just listed this in like 45 seconds. It doesn't have to be 10 consumer order. And then you can do that with anything. Um, here we go. Activision Asteroids game. Even easier. I'm just going to scan it with the barcode. Okay, it's going to show me that 59 of these are listed. And they're sold right there. Okay, that title looks great. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to sell one like this. I'm going to take six photos. I'm going to adjust the shipping and the price, and then I'm going to sell it. It's going to take me 35 seconds to list that. Um, you can do the same thing with every single item on eBay. That's how I list every single morning. I do 20 items in about 40, 40 minutes on average, and that's me taking my time and drinking my drink and waking up and looking and watching YouTube videos and all that stuff. <clears throat> Is there a minimum percentage that you use to determine if you should buy when is sub right? Yep, I, I shoot for 80%. Um, and I'm okay with buying a few of them that are at like a 60% sell through rate because I find a ton of items that have a two, three, four hundred percent sell through rate. Um, so it averages out to between 80 and 100 percent. But uh yeah, like 40 percent and lower, I don't I don't buy whatsoever. But I'm okay with a few 50 and 60 percent sell through rate items. Do you have a thumbnail editing person or do you do it yourself? I have, uh, there's this, this guy reached out to me on Instagram. His name is Angel. He lives in the, he lives in Argentina. Um, he does them for me. And if any of you guys are YouTubers and interested in having him do them for you, he does them for $10 for me. And uh, his name is, oh shoot. And his name is Angel Cicerone. He does all my he does all my thumbnails for me. Angel Cicerone. Boom. Do a challenge where you start a new eBay and do that that twenty dollar and keep reinvesting. So I'm moving in a year. And what I'm thinking about doing is just selling my entire eBay shop to another reseller here in town and then moving to a new to a new city and completely starting over. That sounds awesome, right? I think that would be awesome content. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to sell off my store completely. 
I'll move up north, I'll get my house and everything in order, and then I'll start on a Monday and I'll just do my job and I will document it. And I think it'll be awesome. So stay tuned. Uh, prop, what is the best platform to sell clothing and shoes? Probably eBay. Um, let's see here. You think electronics would be good for whatnot? So I'm actually talking with a whatnot representative who wants me to start selling electronics on whatnot. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, it's just like, like, so like no one's looking for a Sony RMT-V504A at an auction. Like if that, if you have that remote for your DVD VCR comic player and it breaks, then you go to eBay and you buy it. You're, you, but you don't just hop into like an electronics auction and be like, oh, let me bid on this remote that I don't need, you know? So it's tough. Um, maybe I could sell a few VHS play, VCR players, things like that. I don't know. I'm going to try it out because whatnot's going to give me a ton of money just to try it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated. Um, like selling like Amazon pallet returns. I know a lot of people that do pretty well in that because those are things that like you can get people emotionally invested in and just buy on the spot. But like, I don't know. I think I can get people to buy Sony Walkmans and things like that. But like random used electronics, I think you, I think that would be a tough, tough spread on whatnot. Do you think the IRS will change the next year for a person that sells less than 12K a year? I don't think so. I, they, uh, the IRS is like the slowest moving freaking thing in the world. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, just uh, just abide by the current laws and, and uh, keep, keep, keep yourself updated on, on what's going on. I just started reselling on eBay and the shipping is so confusing to me and I, it feel, and I feel so expensive. What is the best option to ship using a men's blazer as an example for an item? So type into YouTube J-Ride Flips Shipping and watch all of my videos on shipping and then go to a different YouTuber and watch all of their videos on shipping. If you ever have a question about anything, try to watch seven hours of content on it. Uh, that's the that's how I learn and that's that's the best way to learn things is just try to find three people that you can relatively trust and then watch their content on it. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just cross data with everyone and do that. Keep grinding, man. Love the work you're doing. Gained a lot of knowledge from the videos. Here they go. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. Thank you very much. How long do you hold on to an item if it doesn't sell? Every, uh, 90 days, every 60 days, I discount my items 10%. And if they're still in my store after, after a 30% off sale. So that means they would have to be in my store for 90, 180, 200. So if they've been in my store for like 300 days, then I take them out and redonate them. I saw you sell the coffee machines. I found one like the other day at the thrift store, but I was afraid to pick it up because I wasn't sure how to list it. Do you test the machine when you buy them? Yeah, you test them and then you can just copy a listing from someone else. Um, someone else smarter than me and better than me already sold it. And I'm just going to copy what they did and sell it. That's how I sell things on eBay. People always complain about eBay fees, open a brick and mortar store and have employees and pay rent and electricity and see how much it costs you. Yeah. And build a website and pay for Google fee, Google ads and Facebook ads and all that stuff. Um, anyone else seen this? Why, if we subscribe to your channel, like your content yet somewhere down the line, we are not still subscribed. Got to make sure our brother is getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll note like, like sometimes I'll click on someone and I'll be like, whoa, I subscribed to you a really long time ago. Why am I not subscribed? And then I'll like resubscribe. It happens every once in a while. Just a little glitch here and there. Would you recommend posting the same clothing item to Facebook, Poshmark, Macari, et cetera? Yeah, I do that. I do that all the time. I haven't sold internationally as of yet. Do you omit any parts of the world? Does shipping internationally delay payments? Nope. No, it's an awesome system. eBay is putting a crap ton of money into it to make it successful. Um, and they're taking care of all returns and everything. So I definitely highly recommend international shipping. Do you still list an item that is in worse condition than you thought when purchasing? Uh, it, I do whatever eBay tells me. So if eBay is telling me that that item still has a strong sell through rate in that condition, then yes. If eBay tells me it has a terrible sell through rate in that condition, then no. That's how I do my video games, LOL. Sell similar in my life. Yeah, sell similar is the way to do it. 
I have a DVD VCR combo play with 150% sell through rate, but I only have five views and it's been 36 hours. Why would it still be that way? 150% sell through rate means that it's going to take about 60 days to sell. So that's why. It'll take about 60 days for that item to sell. I asked the question about minimum percentage. I was more curious about minimum profit percentage. I'm on board with 8% sell through rate. I don't have a minimum profit percentage because if you have something with a fast sell through rate, it's selling fast enough that it doesn't really matter. And if something is selling with that fast of a rate, that means it's an item that is in demand and has value. So it doesn't matter. Like it just it just ends up having a good enough profit. Um, if if you're if you're if you have a good sourcing location. So I don't I don't have a number for that. If it's profitable and it has a fast sell rate, I buy it. Um, I sell cards all the time that have a fast sell rate that make me like a dollar twenty eight sometimes. But that's more of a passion. But yeah, like if something like yeah, I just don't have I don't have a metric for that. So you can come up with one in your business, but I don't have one in mine. I look up everything on whatnot and buy everything. Yeah, whatnot's whatnot's fun. What's up, Andy? So meta. That's what I struggle with. My shop being primarily electronics and stuff, it's tough for me. I could do video games, but AK, I'm scared. Kind of haha. Yeah, video games on whatnot is good. Um, people do pretty well on video games on whatnot, but again, it has to be like good titles, or else. You know. But I'm just key. You can always, you can always just uh, instead of have like, it's popular for for influencers and YouTubers to have dollar starts or $2 starts because we bring enough audience to where we only lose a couple times a show. But if you don't have a following and you only have like 11 people or seven people, you might sell a ton of things for $2, which sucks. It's okay to just start things out at $5 or $7 or $15 and just run it. And if no one bids, no one bids, no worries. It didn't sell, you didn't get what you wanted for it. So you don't have to start things at $1 or $2. You can start things at $5, $15, and then if no one wants to bid on it, that's fine, but just put the next item up. No worries. I think that's what beginners should do on whatnot. Um, don't, don't list the price that you necessarily want, but list the price, the minimum price that you're willing to accept. So like, don't expect to get this sells for $40 on eBay. I wouldn't sell this on whatnot because it just sells too darn quick. But something with like a slower sell through rate, like uh, like let's take a video game that has a fifty percent sell through rate that sells for twenty dollars on eBay. You can start that off at seven dollars, and you'll still make a profit if it gets the minimum bid, and it might go up to fourteen. But at that point, it's like it's that that's what I would do. Um, I'm filming. Uh, I started a new eBay store to prove it's not luck series right now. First video is almost done. Flipping Nostalgia. That's what I'm talking about. I'll check it out later for sure. Everyone go check out Flipping Nostalgia. That sounds like an awesome series. Do you think it's worth it to promote listings? It seems like I get a lot more views when I do, but the fee is no joke. Yeah, so if you owned a pest control company and you paid Facebook $200 in, fee in uh, ads and you got $16,000 worth of pest jobs, you would definitely do that, right? So yeah. Definitely. We're business owners. Um, ask any business owner, hey, would you pay a 2% fee to get 15,000 extra dollars in revenue? Absolutely, I would. That's 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 about my rate. I do 2.6% promoted risk listings, and it equates to about fifteen dollars to $17,000 worth of sales in my store. So yeah, I definitely do that. <clears throat> my goal in that series is to buy a Tesla at the end. Oh, that's dope. Hey bro, I sent the wrong model plane. They look similar to a guy. What should I do? You have to accept the return. Uh, yeah, you messed up, accept the return and then just resell it with the right model number. Um, get on the bigger whatnot shows of items that sell similar and ask if you can promote your bookmarked show. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good strategy too. I need to watch that. Wow, guys, this is the first time in like, my last 20 lives that I made it to the end of comments and questions. This is awesome. This is great. Um, if you guys have any other questions about reselling, about eBay, about thrift stores or garage sales, um, if you have any questions about reselling at all, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. We've been going for an hour and 25 minutes. Uh, this is a good place to stop if you guys don't have any questions, but if you guys do have a few more questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm willing to stay here for two hours. 
which would be another uh, 36 minutes. But yeah, if we don't have any other questions, then we can go ahead and stop here. So I will just give you guys a few more minutes uh, to ask some questions if you'd like to. And if not, we'll hop off. But yeah, let's uh, look up live how some of my uh, how some of my videos are doing while you guys ask or don't ask questions, and then we'll hop off. Um, my videos on TikTok weren't doing very good, and instead of blaming TikTok and the algorithm, I blamed myself. And then I start, and then I did a ton and a ton and a ton of research on uh, hooks and rehooking and making people stay till the end and, and payoffs and all that stuff. And now I'm I'm back at I'm back on I'm back on my grind and I'm, my videos are getting twenty five thousand views seventy thousand views and half a million views. Um, I did a I did a video. I did a troll video about Walmart and it's at half a million views right now and it's awesome. I love it. Okay, so it doesn't look like you guys have too many more questions. So you just promote everything. Listings at two point three. It's two point six percent. Also, how to film a tag sale like a. Clip. Whoa, James, ask that again. Sorry. I promote all of my listings at 2.6%. 2 yes. How to film at tag sale, like a clip on case. I, I don't I don't understand what that question was. If the customer shipping address is not correct when shipping, should I just cancel straight away and refund? Yeah, and then have them buy it again with the correct address is the best thing to do. And when you cancel it, put issue with buy with with buyer's address. How do you ship golf clubs? You go to a golf club store, a used golf club store, you go to their dumpster and you get the boxes that they ship their golf clubs with. That's the easiest way to do it. Is it absolutely necessary to have a PO box as a return address on eBay? Nope. Um, have you ever posted a video longer than one minute on TikTok? Every single one of my videos on TikTok are over a minute. Every single one of them. Um, I get paid $1.20 for every thousand views, because my view, my videos are over a minute. If they were 59 seconds or shorter, I would get paid four cents every thousand views. So every time I hit a video with, every time I post a video that gets 1 million views, I get paid about $1,200. If it was under a minute and I got a million views, I would get paid 40 bucks. <laughs> so yeah, every single one of my videos are over a minute long. Are you in the TikTok Creative Baby program? It's much better than that. Yeah, sorry. Well, wow. I am in that program. And yes, it's awesome. And uh, they actually just announced today that it's no longer the beta program. Um, let's see if I still have the notification. It's now called the Creator Rewards Program. And they're saying that it's going to pay up to 250% more, which is awesome. So that means if that is true, I'll be get I'll be making like four dollars every thousand views. And if I hit a million view video then I'll make $4,000 instead of 1200, which would be awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping that that's, that that's true. And I'll be looking forward to that because I think that I can get 20 million views on a video. I think I can do that. I don't know. It's not going to be common. That's for sure. But I think that I can do that. And if I did that right now, then I would make about $25,000 from that video. But if the rumors are true, that they're going to pay 2.5 times more then I would make cloaks to $100,000 from that. That would be so sweet. From one video, from one one minute video. How awesome would that be? Um, how do you film yourself at tag sales? How do you attach your camera to yourself in a good manner? Um, I just use my phone like this and I just go to this and I record it. We just sold some Maui Gym eyeglass frame. Um, and then also you can use a GoPro with a strap. But yeah, I just, I just use my phone. I just like, I'll find, I'll find an item and then I'll just walk up to it with my phone and I'll just like take another angle. That's it. Or for my long form videos, put a GoPro on my chest. That's a wild difference. Yeah, it sure is. DVD VCR combo players, do you return them if they end up not playing when you bring it home? If the selfie rate and parts only is horrible? Yeah, so for Magnavoxes and Sonys, I sell them as parts because they still sell for like 30 or 40 bucks as parts, 20 to 40, usually 30, sometimes 40. Um, but yeah, if they have a bad sell through rate, um, then yeah, I return them if my, if my thrift store allows it. My local thrift store doesn't allow returns for electronics. So I sell a lot of small stuff, made about $2,000 in 90 days for 
five dollar items and above would you promote it 2.6 percent um if you want to what i would do is i would just do the minimum at two percent and then if you like the growth stay there if you feel like you can get even more and you're willing to pay three percent do that if you promote it at two percent and you don't see a huge increase or you don't like the increase then you can always just go back down so alex i recommend promoting it the smallest amount possible and then increasing over time you get to what's called a bell curve so like the more you promote the more sales you get and then at a certain point for some people it's four percent for some people it's 11 for some people it's nine you get to this point where your return where your turn where return starts to diminish and you want to find that sweet spot and then stop right there and then stay there so it might be at two percent for you it might be at four it might be at 11. Is there anything too fragile to ship? Say it has a good sell through rate and is super fragile. Do you still ship it? Yeah, I don't sell a ton of, uh, so like the, the Sony 400 disc players or like this, uh, I've showed you guys a couple times, this Pioneer 101 disc player, I don't ship those because the internal components rattle and they break every single time. So those are local market deals for me only. I've been selling on Etsy for years with a no return policy. Do you think no returns would work on eBay? No, no, they don't work on eBay. Uh, they can force the return and people, and people, yeah, you just, you definitely want to do returns on eBay if you're going to do it. Do you only list all of your items as one-offs and then the item ends, or do you ever leave it open showing out of stock? Yeah, only one-offs until you get more of the same item. If you think you're going to sell more of those. Yeah, just one-offs every time. One off every time. What iPhone do you use? I have two phones. Um, I have the iPhone, I think this is the 14 Max, and I'm currently recording on the uh, newest iPhone. So I do all my recordings on the, on the latest and greatest iPhone. It's part of being a content creator. So it's, it's a worthwhile expense every single time the newest one comes out. Um, we were able to purchase a few hundred pairs of blue light blocker reader glasses from a major retail box. Really nice, individual, easy to ship. We are selling six to ten pairs a week. That is awesome. That is the most successful business. That is my third most successful business ever. Um, I bought, I uh, private labeled a ton of um, blue, blue light blocking reader glasses. I got them for $1.19 with a case shipped each from china and i sold them for 24.99 on shopify and amazon and it was awesome um and then i just stopped doing that but yeah that was, that was a really fun business blue light blocking glasses were super hot for me would you just keep them in stock and sell them over the course of a few years or would you try putting a huge lot together and moving them it, it's just whatever's best for your business dad um maybe do a combo of both just have a ton of them that you sell for the full asking price of 25 or 30 or 15, whatever it is. And then you can also do like lots of three and lots of five and lots of 10 um, and pick your own prices, obviously get a discount for the bulk, but like whatever you decide to do, but you can't, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, just whatever ends up working best for your business. 1400 in sales over the weekend, zero today. Yep, that happens. Yeah, it's not, nothing wrong with eBay, nothing wrong with the economy. That's, that's just owning a business. Um, I think I, similar, let's see. Yeah, yesterday I did 724 and today I'm at $247.87. Um, so yeah, it just ebbs and flows. And then he just sold to Sony Cyber Shop. Yep, welcome to being a business owner. Um, I'm a painter and auction 40 items daily with shipping. Any other advice? I would, I would, I don't know if that if that's working for you, you can go ahead and do it. But I, uh, are you auctioning them on whatnot, or are you auctioning them on eBay? I need more information. That's awesome until the TikTok ban happens. No, it'll still be great because uh, like Microsoft or Amazon will buy it out, and there might be like two or three months where there's not monetization. But then I I, I think that Microsoft will pay even more money, or Amazon will pay even more money. It, it won't it will it won't cease to exist it'll get banned from chinese ownership and then an american company will buy it out and it'll probably be even better so i'm here for it could you elaborate why you only list everything as a one-off if you are going to sell more of the same item i i rarely when you're going to thrift stores and garage sales you're buying used items 
Um, so the chance of you finding the exact same item with the exact same condition is very low. That's why. What's your 90 day total lot, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, like 72,000 or something like that. How do you set promote rate for a store? Uh, just eBay. I don't know the exact um, sequence, but if you just Google um, promote all listings on eBay, have your eBay store open on one tab and then open another tab and Google how to promote listings on eBay and it'll it'll do it for you. Do you sell Magic the Gathering cards? No. Would you if you could? If it has a fast sell through rate. I don't I don't sell items, I just sell fast sell through rate. So like if you ask me, does Mag Magic the Gathering sell on eBay? I would say no and I would say yes. I would just look up on eBay what cards are actually selling and I'd sell those. NVIDIA buys TikTok. Dude, they don't have, they have just a different infrastructure. They could, but it would be super clunky. The reason why Microsoft or Amazon would be the best buys, Facebook would be the best buy for sure, but the US, US House and, and Senate would not allow that because it would be a monopoly, right? Even though they would still have competitors with YouTube and stuff, it would just be a pro, it would be approaching that monopoly status. But, fate, but Microsoft already has a social network called LinkedIn. It's business oriented, but it is a social platform. So they already do have that infrastructure and that data and all of those engineers. So they'd be able to seamlessly do TikTok. The AWS system on Amazon is also very integrated that they could be able to absorb TikTok as well. It's getting a little nerdy and a lot of people probably aren't interested in this stuff. But uh, yeah, one of those one of those American companies would be able to house TikTok, and uh, I think the monetization on it would be similar or even better than it currently is. Is Shane not on tonight? No, I think he is. I think Soda City Flips will be going live. Let's see. Um, Soda City Flips. Usually he has it scheduled. Let's see. Hmm. I'm not seeing that he has it scheduled, so maybe not. I hope he does. I like to hang out. Holy moly. Not sure what you're referencing to. What's your biggest sale? I sold some Chanel sunglasses for $1,800 on eBay once. That was pretty dope. I'm wondering about your sourcing route. How did you develop it? And do you hit the same store every week? I hit the exact same store every single day, every single morning at the same time. That's because I live in a small town. Ask me again in a year when I move up to Northern Utah, where there's millions of people. I live in a town that only has like 60,000 and there's one big thrift store and two small ones. So there's no uh, development there. But uh, once I moved to Northern Utah, and I actually have options. I am a data and analytics guy and a routine guy. So I'll keep you updated on how I how I make that route. I auction on eBay. I paint 60 to 70 canvases, then spread them out over 40 items daily. Only way I make sales daily consistent. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, because it's like your work um, and you, yeah. I don't know. I don't really have tips for you. I would actually recommend doing half of them as auctions and then half of them as buy it now and see if you start making more money on buy it nows. And if you do have a consistent sell through rate at buy it now, and then you could make a decision of going fully to buy it now or fully to auction. I would, I would run a split test like that. For sell through rate, how do you estimate the time to sell? 100% would be one to 90 days. So a 200% sell through rate would be one to 45 days, 300% one to 30 day sell through rate. Yep, there you go. Um, you got into NVIDIA at $172. Sell, dude. Sell and allocate that money into uh, into a dividend paying stock is what I would do. I think uh, I think we're going to go down for a little bit and then we'll go right back up. Right now, so I had a bunch of uh, growth stocks hit over the last uh, year and I'm selling out of a lot of those positions and repositioning my money into some uh, blue chip stocks because I do think that it's going to downturn a little bit. And if I miss out on another 40% growth, like that's fine because I'll still be growing at like 16% in a bull market with some dividends and stuff. But yeah, dude, um, I, I went, I, 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 I had some pretty big winners too. Do you have a best time of the day to list items? No, don't, don't get caught in those weeds. Don't waste your time on it. Just list your items. doesn't matter when it does not matter when I just got here. How many items has he said so how many times has he had sell through rate and i don't buy items or buy profit uh i don't buy items or buy profit probably three times and then fast sell through rate items probably 
38 to 50 times. Got that Robin Hood gold. Yep. Yep, me too. I reached out to Robin Hood. Um, I wanted to do a video on investing your eBay funds, but they didn't want to work with me because I'm not in finance, but we'll see. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. All right. Well, an hour and 40 minutes in and we don't have any questions. Man, you guys, uh, you guys are killing it. Bought into NVIDIA at 168. What is it today? Like, is it is it back down into the 700s or is it still 800? NVIDIA is currently, oh, it's still 870. Dang, girl. Dang, girl. I got in for 12. I think that's a lie, Donald. Let's see. Oh, no, you, you might have gotten in at 12. I thought it IPO'd much higher. Yeah, you're lying. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Do I sell items to Japan often? I, I think I've sold, like, two items to Japan, maybe. I sell to China pretty often, and I sell to, to Germany pretty often. Um, but to Japan specifically, I think I've only sold two items to Japan ever. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate everyone being here. If you guys could... Um, Type into YouTube, the Reseller Island Podcast. That would be awesome. Go subscribe to the Reseller Island Podcast. Watch our latest video and watch all of our videos. Uh, just put it on in the background while you're working. That's kind of what we designed the podcast for. I'd really appreciate it if you guys uh, followed us there. Me and Sunny Las Vegas. Everyone go to the Reseller Island Podcast on YouTube and subscribe and watch. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Bye.